London, Oxford, Winston Churchill, Inspector Morse, International. <laughs> 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 exciting period of our evolution uh, of Oxford Airport. We've been dominated for 70 years by pilot training activity. That's what Oxford Airport is known as worldwide, globally. Uh, we have the largest pilot training school in Europe. Uh, we were once the busiest runway in the world back in the 1960s, believe it or not. And, uh, but so much has changed in the last five years. As a consequence of losing a huge uh, proportion of that pilot training traffic, we decided to evolve and diversify because we had to, to survive and what we did in the first instance was we replaced all the old decaying uh, infrastructure that existed at Oxford. We were a World War II uh, general aviation puddle jumping airfield and in the last five years we've replaced pretty much everything, all the runway, taxiways, all the really expensive boring stuff, new drains, new lights, you name it. And as a consequence of that, we are now, for the first time in our history, able to take proper aeroplanes. The, the size of the runway is exactly the same as London City Airport, and uh, as is the width, and we can take anything that they can take. Now, in terms of our ambitions for Oxford, we don't intend to turn it into a new great hub. But what we do intend to do is introduce some more niche services as our capabilities are enhanced. Uh, one of the limitations we have is this little terminal here, but you're standing in the boarding lounge today, and if you come and enjoy a flight to Geneva in the next uh, six months or so, you'll be treated like a VIP. Uh, this is normally used by film stars and pop people <laughs> and royalty, and so our, our whole ethos and our whole, whole philosophy here is that we're dealing with executive jets owned by oligarchs. And so one day if we see a 75-seater turn up, uh, for, for, for people going on skiing holiday to Geneva. It doesn't make any difference to us. We're going to treat you the same. So we hope that your experience coming through Oxford is going to be fantastic. Uh, we did for the first time this year some flights to Jersey in the summer. We're going to do that again, by the way. And some very interesting statistics on that. For the operator who, who flies the services to Jersey uh, from 20 airports around the United Kingdom, we were the highest load factor of any service throughout the United Kingdom. We were the fastest selling uh, service out of the United Kingdom. Uh, even for the 2010 season, we're already the fastest selling service to Jersey. And for the passengers that came through Oxford Airport, uh, they rated us higher than any of the other airports in terms of the experience of the airport. So I think when you turn up in, in a few months' time and you're 15 feet uh, away from the check-in desk and then your aircraft is a hundred feet away from the check-in desk I can pretty much guarantee we will not lose your bags I can't give that guarantee for Geneva but they're not bad, Geneva's a pretty good airport um, but I really hope that if you do come through here you have a great experience and in the future uh, we do intend to introduce some other services uh, we've got our sights on places like Edinburgh and a few other destinations around Europe that make a lot of sense, uh, both business-oriented and leisure-oriented. It will take some time, and we are limited in terms of what we can handle capacity-wise, but we'll introduce what makes sense, and you'll see that evolve over the next few years. So it's a very exciting period. But in the first instance, please use Babu, because they're a fantastic airline, uh, very good value for money, far better service than your final those, those blue airlines or those orange airlines. <laughs> and, and on that note, I would like to introduce you to Mark Lord from uh, Babu, who will just tell you a little bit about the Babu experience.